when you guys attacked the defensive side of the football and free agency for the second year in a row, was that by design or was that just how things panned out? Uh, a little bit of both. We thought we had uh, needs over there we needed to address and uh, we had opportunities that came up that we uh, felt were good opportunities for us. So it was a little bit of both. Um, you know, you, you never know how free agency is going to go uh, when you kick it off. But uh, we knew that there were there were spots over there we wanted to address and uh, had needs and we wanted to kind of free up our draft a little bit. And uh, so that's that's the way we chose to go. On the offensive line, you added Riley Reef and re-signed Quinn Spain. Um, are you satisfied with the current state of your offensive line? And moving forward in the draft, how do you feel about the upcoming draft class, that offensive line? Yeah, I, I think it's a position we'll address at some point in the draft. We'll see uh, where that point comes. Um, you know, we're, we're still going through those discussions. Um, I, I do think we've got some good players in the building, and uh, I think the group can come together. I, I'm very uh, 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 bullish on how that group can meld. I, it's got to stay healthy, and and once if we can get a healthy season out of it, and we can get five guys playing together, I think the the unit as a whole will look a lot better. And uh, so I'm hopeful, knocking on wood, that uh, that guys can uh, can get through camp and get through the season healthy and kind of come together as a group. But uh, do I anticipate still some new additions? I do, yeah. Duke, have you received any intriguing offers for number five? I'm sure you've at least gotten some calls, but have you re received at least any intriguing offers at five? Yeah, there's 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 nothing hard. Um, it, it's uh, I think people are still waiting to see exactly what's going to happen. Uh, maybe at three and four, uh, those things will come uh, a little in, in a more firm way uh, during the draft uh, as the draft unfolds. Um, we have discussions with teams all the time about potentials and uh, are you willing to talk about it? And uh, yeah, we're willing to talk about it. Um, it's got to be right and. Uh, I've said before, I, I don't anticipate going down to a point where we're uh, we're losing the level of player that we're looking at right now. I think we're in a good spot uh, the way the uh, talent is in this draft to uh, to get one of the guys that uh, is a premier talent. You kind of answered the, the second part that I was going to ask you. Is, is there a line of demarcation of how far you would be willing to go back? Uh, I think so. It all depends on the compensation. But um, again, I, I don't want to drop down a whole level of player. And, and we think there are some uh, really uh, top level players that we're going to have access to right where we are. Duke, how many premier players at that level, non quarterbacks, do you think there are in this draft? Um, I, I probably won't answer that in a firm way, but we think there's a number uh, that uh, that we would uh, really feel would fit us and, and uh, improve us as a team immediately. And uh, so whether that's uh, whether that's uh, three, five or ten, uh, I probably won't uh, won't answer that in a firm way right now. Is there a reason that the Bengals have so much cap space right now compared to most of the other teams in the league? Uh, no, we, uh, we budget for, uh, for our, uh, current team. There are things that, uh, that will come off of it, uh, as, uh, the draft unfolds, you've got a budget for your draftees. You've got a budget for potential injury, uh, uh, guys throughout the course of the year. You have to budget for your, uh, for your, uh, practice squad. Uh, we plan on having a practice squad. So all those things have to fit in the budget. I think the teams are, there are teams around the league that are still going to have to, uh, wiggle to, uh, to achieve the number that they need to get through the season. Duke, obviously you were a person to go see uh, Jamar Chase at, at his pro day. What, what were your impressions of him? Uh, I thought he did a real nice job. Looked like he had been working uh, well uh, it, with the season off that he had. Um, uh, looks very competent in about every area that a receiver can look competent and tested out really well. And we enjoyed our time down there with him. Duke, it seems like a good number of the top prospects, maybe more than not, opted out and then compound that with injury that they maybe had the year before. How, how much more difficult does that make the evaluation process this year? I, I think it's a little more difficult. You're right, Dave, when you don't have current film to look at, uh, it, it, it can be, uh, it can be uh, problematic or it can leave you wanting to see a little more, but uh, those won't be decisions that we uh, choose to not take a guy based on. Uh, it, was a, it was a challenging year for everybody. Different conferences had uh, different time schedules. And uh, so everybody's situation was different. And uh, it's not going to be something that's a, uh, a hard and fast decision point. Uh, 
uh, we'll evaluate what's a, what's there to be evaluated. And uh, every player is a projection into the NFL, no matter if they played this year or didn't uh, didn't play this year. You, you still have to project the traits onto your team and in the NFL. Hey Duke, how do you see the uh, how do you see the debate? Uh, kind of a red hot debate out there. Uh, the tackle, you know, do you see the tackle as being a rarer spot than the wide receiver? It would seem like in Bengals history and through the league, the tackle, uh, you know, an elite tackle is rarer than a, an elite receiver. Well, that's a pretty elegant way of asking a question that I'm not going to answer, Jeff. And uh, I, I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you articulating it that way. But I don't intend to uh, get into the debate about uh, some of the very top level players in this draft. Uh, uh, we're going through uh, uh, our rankings still. Uh, we're having meetings daily on it and uh, and we'll come out with uh, with the order. Uh, for our current team and uh, for the long term of the Bengals, but uh, I appreciate the question. But uh, in terms of uh, in terms of trying to rank uh, some of the top names in the draft uh, based on position or otherwise, uh, I'll probably avoid at this point. Sorry well, about that. I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. Duke. I got well, carried did. away. I guess I got. You I got can't, uh, Jeff, you can't put me on the spot. You can offer uh, any questions you want. I just might choose not to uh, go into greater detail. Uh, I wish I had I wish I had some interesting things to show you like I did last year, but I've got the, this room isn't very interesting and I don't have my porch to walk you guys around. So it's uh, uh, I need I need some other time killers. So I'll just have long winded non answers for some of these questions. Sorry about that. What, what do you think in in today's game is the toughest position to accurately predict success translating from college to pro maybe taking QB out because obviously there's a lot there but what and has that maybe changed over the last five to ten years um that's a good question I, I don't have uh every position you know has certain traits that you'd like to see and uh and then every player has certain deficits that you have to say okay we'll accept that or we won't accept that uh very few players have uh, all the traits you want and every measurable you want um, but it, there, there isn't a, uh, an easy position to say that's a definite translation. Um, the, the biggest piece that we have is, you know, if you could tell me who was going to stay healthy, I would probably jump on uh, that bandwagon immediately. So the health of these players is very difficult to uh, predict, and, uh, and the injuries that they uh, will have in the future are very difficult to predict. Um, in general, um, you know, I think the game changes uh, from college uh, to the NFL. I, I think sometimes the uh, size, strength, and physicality on the line of scrimmage is a, is a big jump. And for some of the skill guys out there, I, I think maybe it's a little less of a jump because there are dynamic athletes that can run and move and cover in, in college as well. So, uh, you know, for the guys in the trenches, um, you know, the strength, size, and physicality will, will all increase on our level. Duke, y'all, y'all cut Gio Bernard uh, here recently. What are you guys looking for in a, in a, in a backup for, for, for Joe, Joe Mixon? Yeah, I, I think we uh, feel good about the guys we have in the, in the barn. I, I think Samaje's role is going to grow. Um, and I think he earned that last year. And, uh, and I think we've uh, got some belief in Travion as well, whether there'll be an addition beyond that. We'll, uh, we'll see as we go. I have nothing but the uh, utmost respect for Gio. Uh, you know, he was a successful pick for us, played eight years here. Um, we would have liked to have uh, had him back maybe under different terms and, uh, and totally respect the fact that uh, he chose a, uh, a different path. Um, but uh, really a, a marvelous person. Uh, you know, he's been a wonderful addition for us and, uh, and uh, had a good career here. And, and uh, he's a guy that I'll miss being around. He's just a, a wonderful guy, and I wish him uh, success. What, what do you what do you make of the growth of the receiver position the last few drafts specifically and obviously over time we've seen how how much you think these drafts with tons of quality receivers making an impact is just the way of life in the NFL going forward or do you think it's maybe a thing where the pendulum will swing back and forth 
Um, that's a good question. You know, colleges colleges are throwing the ball an awful lot, and so they're developing these guys. And uh, the NFL is is become a passing league as well. So when you bring them in, you want to get use out of them right away. And I, I don't know that it's necessarily a new thing. When AJ came to us, uh, you know, his first year, we threw him right in, and and he was a dynamic player for us. So especially with early round wideouts, you know, you you expect them to come in and contribute. That's why you take them. And uh, and I think the game translates a, a little more one to one, you know, from the college game to the uh, pro game there. Hey, uh, Duke, what, what do you think the toughest part about uh, trying to evaluate an edge guy is? It seems like they come from all sorts of leagues and shapes and sizes. What's the toughest part about trying to project what an edge guy can do in the league from college compared to? Yeah, a lot of times it's uh, it's maybe a little different than what they're doing in college. They're facing different guys, and uh, and so you wanna you wanna make sure that the guy has uh, enough strength to hold up in the run game, and then does he does he also uh, offer the ability to to rush against good tackles? And uh, they've got to have some length. Uh, they've got to have some strength. They've got to have flexibility. Uh, and, and there takes, uh, there's normally a, a, a time frame where they learn the techniques that, uh, that, uh, develop over time and that are successful in the NFL. But, um, like any, like any position, you know, the better athlete he is, uh, the tougher he is, uh, uh the more desire he has to get to the ball, uh, with all defensive players, uh, they've got to have desire to get to the ball and make the play. And if, uh, if that desire is lacking, normally, uh, Normally, you're not going to build that in them over time. Is there a measurable that's non-negotiable after all your years doing this? I mean, is there a, a measurable that if this guy lacks this or doesn't have that, uh, 99 times out of 100, he just doesn't pan out? Or is it just guys figure out ways to, uh, you know, to overcome their weaknesses? I mean, what is there a, is there a non-negotiable and measurable or not? Um, for every non-negotiable measurable you could uh, you could list, you could also list a guy that's overcome it. And, and so the great thing uh, and, and the, the fun thing about scouting is every player is a totally complete independent case study. And uh, so where they might lack in one area, they might make up for it in another. And no two players are identical. And so that's the fun part about scouting is uh, that uh, very few players have every trait that you want. And, uh, and you have to uh, try to determine uh, who's made of the right stuff and can overcome that and, uh, and who can't. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't list, uh, you know, every, every scout in the league is going to tell you is bigger, better. Yeah, bigger is definitely better. Is stronger, better. Yeah, stronger is better. Faster is better. Uh, tougher is better. I, I think the trait uh, that uh, is probably overriding with all successful players is do they enjoy playing the game or do they play it for what the game brings them? And that's the toughest piece for a scout to uncover is uh, what motivates the guy. It, it, does the game motivate them? Does the competitive nature of the game motivate them? And do they like performing or do they do it because they can? And the ones that do it because they can are normally the ones that flame out earliest. Duke, I know you made a uh, evaluation, Jamar Case, but Chase, but uh, can you evaluate Mr. Sewell as an offensive lineman? Uh, that uh, you know, what 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 your impressions of him is? Yeah, I, I commented on uh, Chase's pro day. I'll be happy. I, I was uh, uh, fortunate enough to get out to Oregon to see uh, to see Panay's, uh pro day. Uh, physically, exactly what you're looking for. He's strong. He's big. He's thick. He, he's uh, he. Uh, has balance. He's got good movement for his position. Um, you know, he's got versatility. And it, it, again, it, it appeared that he took the time to get himself ready to go in the season uh, that he had uh, off. So, uh, you know, it, it was also a very uh, impressive pro day. Duke, a lot of debate uh, at number five as we look at these mo uh, mock drafts. Uh, can you give us an idea if that debate was the same in your draft room? with you and Mike and Zach and the brain trust, how that process works. And uh, ultimately, if there's a total disagreement, how you guys work it out. 
Well, the position we're in right now, it, it, we're going to have a guy that uh, everybody likes. And uh, that, that's why I'm careful to get out of a position to where we're, we're making those strong ar uh, arguments where somebody is dead set against somebody. We're going to have a choice between people that we feel very strongly about. So that's a good position to be in. And we're just talking through what, what is the best way forward. And uh, those discussions are ongoing and uh, they involve everybody that's uh, had a hand in the evaluation. And, uh, and I feel strongly we'll make the right call for us, but it's, uh, it, it's a call between really good options at, at, uh, at uh, different positions with, with different players. And, uh, you know, so that, that is a, a good position to be in. When you pick high in a draft, Gary, it's uh, uh, you pick a good player, but you leave a lot of good players on the board. And we're going to leave good players on the board. Uh, we get one pick. If we had uh, multiple picks, we'd, we'd certainly use them. But uh, uh, we feel like we'll take the right guy for us, and, and we'll get to that point uh, sometime prior to draft day. What led to you guys bringing back Quentin Spain? And I guess, what are your expectations for him heading into the season? Yeah, Quentin uh, Spain came in, did a really good job for us, fit in immediately, learned our system fast. Uh, the thing Quentin offers is uh, experience, toughness. He's a good leader and he can learn fast and he can play multiple positions. And uh, so Quentin Spain is a, uh, is a proven NFL player and, uh, and he'll be in the mix to, uh, to have a real role for us. And we'll see how it goes. There'll be other people in that mix as well. Duke, when you're evaluating these prospects and trying to figure out if they do love the game, like you mentioned, how valuable is it to talk with Joe Burrow about the LSU prospects or T Hickens about Clemson or Jonah Williams about his former teammates at Alabama and, and kind of get their input on, on what they think about these prospects? Yeah, I think when you can talk to t uh, teammates of guys, uh, there's a perspective there that, uh, that you don't have access to. And so uh, we try to take advantage of that uh, the best we can. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys have close relationships with some of these players and, uh, and so, um, yeah, we, we use every source we can. It's, it's no different than talking to his uh, high school coach or his college coach or uh, the coordinator or the head coach or the trainer or the uh, strength and conditioning guy. It, it's, we try to talk to as many people that know the guy and come to a consensus on him and, and teammates fit into that mold for sure. Duke, the, the Jets traded Darnold pretty much guaranteeing that a quarterback will go two, the 49ers moved up and guaranteed the quarterback will go three. Did you do a little bit of a, a fist pump every time a spot in front of you is basically guaranteed to be a quarterback? Uh, well, I can't confirm a fist pump and, and nor, nor can I, uh, tell you that, uh, I know for sure what they're going to do. Uh, yeah, you can read the tea leaves. Uh, the one thing I know for sure is that when we go to pick, we will have known what they've done unless they choose to pass. And I don't think that that's uh, going to be the issue. So I think all picks will be turned in ahead of us uh, prior to the time expiring. So we'll know, uh, you know, we can guess like everybody else uh, and we can feel like we know. Uh, but the one thing is we will know before we go. And, and so that's really all that matters to us. Duke, the, uh, the, the pre-draft narrative around y'all has seemingly excluded uh, Kyle Pitts. What, what are y'all's thoughts about him and, and kind of what, what do you make of him as a prospect? Yeah, I can't confirm any of the pre-draft narrative that uh, is more your world, Ben, than mine. Um, but, uh, you know, we were able to go down and see Kyle at his pro day as well. Uh, really outstanding traits for the position. A lot of versatility. Um, catches the ball well. He runs well. Uh, he's going to be a matchup problem uh, for, uh, for defensive coordinators in the league. Um, uh, motivated kid and, uh, you know, very impressive to see uh, in person and talk to. You know, y'all, y'all are about year three of this rebuilding project. You know, uh, as, as as one of the guys in the front office, where, where we can speak to, what's what's the feeling like entering this year, and, and kind of what are y'all looking for as a front office uh, in twenty twenty? We want to win. We want to win. That's uh, that's every year. Uh, it doesn't change. Um, you know, uh, we have goals like every team has goals, and uh, the number one goal is to win. And when we line up on Sundays. The expectation is to win. Everything we do uh, in uh, preparing the team is with that expectation. Everything we do in acquiring players is with that expectation. So that's an easy answer. We want to win, and uh, and we want to win every time we take the field. 
Duke, how does that impact your thought process with the fifth pick? Uh, how quickly that player can make an impact or how big of an impact he can have right away? Uh, James, I would expect anybody we take in that uh, with that fifth pick uh, is going to be uh, the expectation is that uh, he's going to come in and help us win immediately and play a big role. Um, that's the expectation. And, uh, and we'll have a vision for that guy. Uh, but uh, yeah, it won't be a, a long development process with a guy that we take there. Uh, his expectation will be to come in, uh, be a starter and be a producer for us. Two more minutes. Rick, you've had some rotten luck when it comes to injuries with your first pick in recent years. Does that have any impact, you know, on where you might go this year? Or is that just one of those things that, you know, obviously you, all, you always take the medicine or the, the medicals into consideration, but does that history have any impact? If I could predict what's going to happen to these guys when they take the field with us, uh, it would make life a lot easier. But Dan, we've taken guys that have never missed a game in college that uh, the first thing that happens to them with us is they come in and get hurt before they even take the field. And, uh, and then we've taken guys that uh, have had injury issues in college that come in and are, are, you know, never get hurt again. So it's, a, uh, it's not something that you can predict. It's not something that we figured out how to predict anyway. Uh, you, know, you got to take guys that you know are motivated, and when they do get hurt, they're motivated to get better and get back on the field. Uh, you, we can judge that, but uh, in terms of predicting uh, a shoulder injury or a pec tear or uh, an ankle sprain that's six weeks out, or we, we just can't, haven't figured out a way to predict those yet. Speaking of injuries, your quarterback said that he's still optimistic about uh, playing week one. Are you optimistic that he'll be available uh, for the season opener? And how is his rehab going, your estimation? Yeah, I'm with Joe. If he's optimistic, I'm optimistic. Uh, you know, uh, that's Joe. And, uh, and, and that's our expectation, too. And uh, I haven't been close to the rehab. I've been uh, grinding away in the draft room. But when I've seen him, I've been impressed with uh, where he is and how he's working and uh, and uh, what he says, I believe. And uh, and uh, that's certainly our expectation, too. Uh, you know, he checks the boxes for a motivated player and uh, one that uh, loves the competition and loves competing and uh, will do what it takes to uh, put himself in that position. One last question. Speaking of Joe, how much uh, is he lobbying for Jamar Chase? Is he? Um, I, I haven't heard a lobby again. I've been head down in my uh, in my draft room. I, I Joe is uh, Joe Joe is aware of the opera or the uh, players that uh, we have in front of us. I think he's on board with anybody we choose. Uh, you know, from that group, and uh, uh, there there is no uh, active lobby for uh, any one or the other. Uh, I do think he is aware of the universe and uh, and is on board with anybody we choose from that universe. And uh, and that's a good thing. I, I've said it before, you know, uh, we're going to do what we think is best uh, to uh, to make Joe uh, as uh, successful as he can be, because the more successful Joe is, the more successful the Bengals will be. But the expectation is always to win. And uh, and that's his expectation. That's mine and it'd be everybody's in the organization. And, uh, and so we'll take the guy that we'll think uh, will help us uh, achieve that.